ladies and gentlemen. It is that time of the season as we've been hyping up the past few weeks. These are your playoff teams. We got the West Side Grafai holding down the dog versus Croc. I'll explain the reasoning in a second, but you'll see. Then we got the Monroe Minins versus the Athens Ash Ketchums. The side of the bracket hasn't really changed a whole lot, but the bottom half is where we start getting into some spicy shit. Salford Swablus versus the Manchester Missing Nose. It's going to be a crazy game, especially after what we saw last night again. We'll get into it all in a bit. Give me the intro. You got to give it to me. It's a get, give it to me. And then possibly the craziest turnaround of the season. We have a rematch from the semifinals of season two in the quarterfinals. Last minute Linoons versus the Queen City Quillfish in Coach JC. If you told me JC was making playoffs to start this season, I thought you were gonna be right. If you told me that in the middle of the season, I thought you were crazy. The JC's making the climb. He got that belt in the mail, and he wants to win another one. But only one former champ can make it out of quarterfinals. Will they have the dog? Alright. <laughs> so with that dumbass intro out the way, um, yeah, I don't, I, I try to make it so the whole intro goes out with the time, but, uh, that one didn't fit as well, I, I don't know. I just woke up like an hour ago, so maybe I'm still a little tired, who knows, but yeah. So a couple things to explain here, because there's been a lot of games this past week, and this bracket has changed a, a decent amount. So, Croc is technically still the division leader in a way, but um, since the issue is they both have the same differential, but Tanner has the better record right now, and Croc doesn't like Croc lost to me this week and then Tanner beat Wu this week so I mean the issue is they're tied in differential and in divisional record right now so I can't really put one over the other until their game this week so um just for the sake of simplicity I put Tanner over Croc just because he has a better record right now so who knows I mean it's th this this is bound to change depending on um just how their game goes this week but yeah um we'll get into all that a little bit later um but yeah uh this is the bracket currently and to understand how jc even got in the playoff picture to begin with this is where this the purpose of this video is we got the week 11 recap so there's a lot of games this week uh, I delayed this video a little bit. I was going to make it Sunday night, but then I was told yesterday that the games are going to be played all Monday. So I was like, you know what? I'll give it a day. And then we'll worry about it then. So here we are. Uh, a lot of games this week. Uh, there's the two games we had to make up from last week that didn't make it to the end of this, that last week's video. So yeah, there's a lot of games to get over. So let's get into it. Uh, the first game of the week that was played was Chris versus Nick. And this was a weird one. Um, because again, Nick not really showing the best this season is his first season. So still just trying to find his placement in it all. But, uh, as you can see, he found some success with toxicity because Chris really didn't have an answer for it. I don't believe he was Volt Absorb on the Palmot. He could have been, I don't know. But, uh, from, if I'm remembering correctly, his toxicity was actually putting in the finest of work. So... Chris just didn't have an answer for it, I guess. But again, Chris just had, like, he can use Benetica, you know what I mean? So, and also, Low Kicks finally met its match in something that can quad resist its stab. I don't think and Nick has run into that issue yet this season. So, rough week for the Low Kicks, but. Yeah, just a solid game all around. I mean, nothing too surprising. Chris, second team in the league. Nick, second worst team in the league. Uh, if anything, I expected more of a stop, but Chris, but Nick could actually kept it pretty close, so good showing from Nick, 
just keeping it close. There's a couple, obviously, some plays that he didn't get right, but still learning the game. Um, and not a whole lot to say besides just he kept it close with someone like Chris, so that's definitely impressive. Maybe he can pull sneak out one more win against someone. Who knows? But, yeah. Not much to say from this game. Nick, er, Wu versus New. This was actually a surprising one because... <laughs> Crobat started the set by just killing everything with fucking plus six nasty plots, destroying everything. Then Mawile came out and started reverse <laughs> sweeping Woo. And it was just the craziest time. It was a. Oh. Oops. I should probably have my face cam not over the po people's Pokemon. Uh, so let me go back up really quick then. Uh, so. These are Nick's, Katie's, on his mons. I guess I forgot my face cam was in the corner. Oopsie daisy. So yeah, um, that, that's Nick's, Katie's. If you're interested by any means. So yeah. Uh, so Nick Wu versus New. Again, Crobat started the set out by just destroying everything with Nasty Bat. I, Nasty Bat is one of my favorite sets of all time, and Wu just cooked him with it, bro. He had no switching. But then Mawal came out. And just destroyed. Wu. I honestly thought Wu was about to take game one over him, but Wu brought it back. Knew what he had to do. He sacked the Eldegoss with the Rocky Helmet, which is good tech. Got the Mawile dead. And then he just did Houndstone things. And game two, I don't think it was particularly close, but game one, it was very close. Uh, so for our bottom two teams in Nu and Nick, they actually had pretty decent showings this week. And, you know, again, their seasons are kind of over, but. It's a lot to look forward to for Season 4 if they decide to stick around. And I think they can take their experiences from this season and mold them into something different for next season if they decide to stay. So, as long as they can just... If they can just snag one win off of someone, that'll change the playoff race a lot. So, we'll see if they can do that. Uh, and yeah, I mean, just great set for them all while. And uh, Nasty Bad OP. That, that, I've been preaching it, man. Nasty Bad the GOAT. Now this is the set that started to change a lot. JC's back was kind of against the wall. He, he like he had to win out, and I've been saying that like if he wants to make playoffs, he has to win out. And my God, did he just did he just realize Chiu was actually broken? Scarf Chiu just destroyed Preston's team. He had nothing for it, nothing for it. Oh, and Basque Legion got put in the pack by the Apple team, like. There was nothing Preston could do. It felt like just Chi Yu just destroyed everything. Um, there was an unlucky flinch with the Dark Pulse on the Gallade when he tried to go for the agility, but I don't think that was changing a whole lot. And uh, yeah, I mean, Preston's team after the trade he made by getting rid of Blissey, Seismitoad, and Mega Scissor just, it's shown. When me, Chris, and Preston filmed that mid-season video, I literally said, this is Preston's season. Like, he was in a position... He was doing better than me, almost, statistically. Like, yeah, he had a loss, but his Pokemon KDs were better. He had, like, less games played or whatever. Like, Preston was doing really good. And, ev and after that video, he made those trades. Got Thunderous Mianchao. And, uh... Thunderous Mianchao. Something else, I forget. And then he won his first game against Josh pretty convincingly. And fun fact, they play again week 12. This is the rematch. But since week 6, he has looked absolutely terrible. Like, I hate to say it like that rudely, but to go from being, like, the guy to being, like, not making playoffs anymore is crazy. And granted, again, didn't really have a whole lot for Chiyu. But no team really does. And teams were doing good against JC up until then. Um, but yeah. Um, like JC didn't even use Noiver in this set, bro. O and O. Literally goose eggs. Like, Scarf to you. To you is definitely an issue. Just not matchup wise, just as a mod in general. And yeah, Sharpedo, just with. If you get the plus two of Sharpedo, then Basque Legion doesn't matter. So. JC was using Sharpedo really well, actually. Using it to, like, come in on Basket Legion, protect, eat the last respects, get the second speed boost, and now speed was really 
like good tech. He was really JC was playing the rain turns like perfectly on like a defensive way, and Preston just did not have an answer for Chiyu, which is funny because he's a rain team. But JC wasn't even clicking fire move. I don't even. Th I think he accidentally put on flame charge instead of flamethrower. He was literally just clicking dark pulse and everything was dying. So crazy ass set from JC. Uh, Preston just. I mean, you saw the bracket in the beginning. You're out of playoffs now, so if you want to make it, I mean, you're kind of stuck with your team now because roster lock was last night. But uh, you really got to find a way to just win these next three games and hope JC loses one. Because oh Lord, all Lord heavens, uh, yeah. So we'll move on from this because, as you can see, this was kind of just to you the show. I don't know. Going and after I saw this game of the week, I was like, I don't think any Amon will have as dominant of a week as Chiyu did. And then my set came along, <laughs> and uh, Blastoise just destroyed Crocs flat out. Um, yeah, when I was at match preview, I was like, this is pro if I were to ever bring Shell Smash Blastoise because I wanted to bring it. I've been looking for it every week. I saw my match against Croc, I'm like, he doesn't have an answer for it, so let's let's bring it. Holy shit. Just millions dead. Um, You can just see from the... I mean, I started fumbling a little bit against the Arcanine. Not gonna lie. Arcanine was definitely an issue, but going into game two, I just let Garchomp got the rocks up, and then I got literally the perfect switch into Blast, so it's just... He had his uh, Arcanine out. I taunted it, so he couldn't will so he couldn't toxic the Blastoise. Went into it, got a free shell smash off, and then everything just died. And then uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, Croc. If because again, Croc. As of right now, I mean, if you lose to Tanner, if you beat Tanner, you don't gotta worry about shell smash Blastoise again, because you'll be right here and you'll be fighting Curtis. But if you lose to him, number one, you're still. You're not, even if you lose to Tanner, your playoff race is jeopardized because you still have to fight Wu for the playoff spot. Because again, if you lose to Tanner, you will then be six and six, and then Wu is six and five. So if he beats me this week, he's over you. But if he loses me, you guys are still tied, which means the last two weeks are going to be insanely close between the two of you. Um. So yeah, this is gonna be a crazy, crazy time. Uh, so yeah, Croc, if you want to guarantee playoffs, you kind of have to beat Tanner this week. Because again, if you lose to Tanner, um, you and Wu were in a pretty crazy race last for the, the last two weeks. And you could go from being division leader to not making playoffs very quickly. So I would definitely focus up for your game against Tanner because that is obviously... Your most most important game of the season, and for Tanner, it kind of is too, but a little less so. And I'll explain why, maybe in this video, but next video that I'm making right after this is going to be the predictions for this week. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But yeah, we're making two videos back to back, so essentially it's going to be one giant thing. But don't worry about that. But yeah, my game against uh, Croc just there was no chance. I mean. I haven't. I brought Shell Smash Blastoise once previous to this game. That was against Tanner, and it didn't really do anything. But against Croc, I mean, there, there's literally nothing he could do. So, uh, yeah, I mean, definitely sucks for Croc. Uh, it was. I don't really know what he does to stop it next time, but yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, you better hope you don't see me in playoffs because Blastoise is putting them numbies up in the best. In a game is putting that up in a best of five set so yeah um just rough game from croc just considering the season he's been having to just get blasted by that so hard um definitely unfortunate for him but yeah um i don't know like, because I've only bought it once against Tanner and he didn't do anything. So, like, I, you can't really expect the Shell Smash Blasters to come out, especially just randomly in week 10 or week 11, just randomly bring it out. But, yeah, um, just not a whole lot he could have done. He kind of got blindsided by it. And, yeah, just uh, just a rough set for him. But, hey, you, you could get your rematch in playoffs if you lose to Tanner. But, 
I would definitely focus on beating Tanner because that is more important. So, yeah. Uh, good game to Croc. Might see you in the playoffs. It depends. Uh, but, yeah. Let's keep moving it forward. B versus Biff. This was... God, this is a crazy set. I mean, Life or Blanders was destroying Biff's team. And then Biff just kind of woke up and just god moded Sableye, bro. Oh my god. B said it last night. Um, I forget what. He said uh, he underestimated Biff. And... I would say in a way kind of showed I mean I don't know I mean I, I from the viewer perspective I would say it wasn't like I don't think he's underestimating him but yeah just crazy crazy game I mean like I'm trying to like this game was just like B just got put in a but got put in a pack by Sableye bro I mean Sableye was like, when Sableye has a better KD than an Iron Bundle, you know something went wrong, bro. You know something had to go wrong. And God, holy. The unfortunate thing is that there was a lot of hacks. Um, I'll pull up the replay, actually. Because I told B about it. And uh, he kind of realized it once I showed him. It was game two. So, there's a lot of cursed body shenanigans going on. This made this super AIDS. That's not the... The issue was this right here. So, Glade kills the Corsola and beat disables it and then b brings out reggie seal right here oh fuck i gotta move my face cam again bro. jesus christ right here he eats a close combat lives it because of the chopple berry and then gets paralyzed on the counter if b doesn't get paralyzed there and hits the counter he kills Gallade and wins the set 2-0 but Gallade just ran through his team. He couldn't do shit. And just... Like... Oh my god. Yeah. Like, it was just tough, bro. It was tough. Because then B had to lock himself into Draco, which meant Gallade could get the... Uh, Gallade could get the... Uh, thing. Like, they even said GG. But then he hit this. And then... <coughs> Yeah, I mean, crazy comeback from Biff. I mean, I said it in my video. Um, I said it in my predictions video, I think, last week. And I basically said, uh, cr or not Croc, Jesus Christ. Uh, Chase, and, uh, Chase and Biff are kind of just here for the rest of the season to ruin everyone's playoff chances. And my God, are they doing it. Biff. In a game that mattered so much to B, because this week he plays in this, which is such an important game for him. Um, to lose this game, just, it stings real bad. Like, it feels, re pun not intended, but I guess intended now. But God, Jesus Christ, was that just brutal to see. I mean, B had him in the palms of his hand, and then dropped it. So... Great set from Biff, showcasing that while he's out of the playoffs, definitely not out of it mentally. And, uh, I mean, hey, just shows to coaches that, you know, while majority of the teams are still in the playoff race and there's only four teams that aren't in playoffs, it's, what, Biff, Nick, New, and Chase. Even though those four aren't in playoffs, you still got to take those games seriously because something like this can happen to you if you just waltz in thinking it's going to be a free game, so... Biff, lo love it. I love that you're changing shit up, making the playoff race more exciting, but throwing curveballs at us. But for B, this is really bad. Like, you got to be MS. You cannot afford to go five. If you go down five to seven, I don't know how you make playoffs. So let's hope 
we don't see that because JC's going to come up and we can't have you falling down. So B, let's hope you can get your mental together. You got a lot of trades for against the MS. We'll see if it happens. Again, we'll get into that a little bit later. But yeah, um, let's hope that B can make playoffs because again, when me and JC were doing the award show video last season, at the time, B said he wasn't coming back. We felt bad, but I said in that video, and JC agreed with me, that if B stays around for another season, like he's a playoff contender team, and he's shown it so much this season, and he's on the cusp of it. He's right there, but just falling short when it matters most. So B, stressful end of the season for you. That's kind of how it works, you know what I mean? You gotta pick up the slack from where that you dropped down earlier in the season. Let's hope B can. Uh, let's hope B can do the thing, man. Let's hope B can do the thing. This was the most important game of the season for the both of them. And my God, was would you rather watch? <laughs> Hold on, let me pull up my meme that I put in the chat. I gotta scroll up a little bit, but uh, we're gonna do it because why not? Yeah, let me just keep talking. Uh, this was a crazy set because uh, this had major playoff implications. And I had Tanner losing. And after game one, I was like, oh, well, Tanner's... I don't know. I don't know. But Tanner pulled it back. And, uh, yeah, I mean, just... I mean, if we're talking potential set of the seasons, this is definitely up there for sure. I mean, it was a great set. And can't get much close game three wasn't that close but for games one and two i mean you just can't get that much closer than that ah, where is this okay here's the meme open a browser <laughs> yeah bro would you rather watch toy story <coughs> or woo and fucking tanner's match jesus christ but uh yeah um go back here this was just Wu played this game the way he probably should have been playing this game the entire season I mean you use all as much resources as you can to put Houndstone in a position to just click one move last respects and he did that but Tanner knew what he had I mean Toy Scarf Meowstic. It sounds really stupid, but it won him the game. So, what do? And, uh, I mean, again, I've been very vocal about this. I think Tanner, not that he's been using Aggron bad, but I don't think he's been using him great this season. Like, I think he's very middling Mega, which isn't, I mean, not a bad thing. But I think when you look at this game in specific, the importance of Aggron cannot be understated. I mean... This was like Agron's game. Like when you, th when Tanner's season is over and he thinks about like, oh, what was my Pokemon's best game? Like, and he starts going down the list. This is the story. This game in specific is the story of the duo, Meowstic and Agron. Because coming into the season, that was his whole plan: get Agron behind screens and just win. And while he didn't get screens with Meowstic, like it wasn't that wasn't the plan, like he intended to at the beginning of the season, but. That duo of Meowstic and Aggron just, it carried him through this set. I mean, Slitherwing and Valiant didn't have a bad game, but Meowstic and Aggron were the stars of this show. They did really well, and they were crucial in the reasoning why they won. And for Wu, just felt a little bit short. Just felt a little bit short. Uh, there was a little bit of a controversy with this set. Not really a controversy, but Wu said he misclicked his Terra. And, I mean, it did cost him the game by terrestrializing game two, but it's just one of those things, man. It's just one of those things. You gotta... I I'm gonna pull up the clip because I thought about this earlier in the week, and it is prop... Oh, fuck. Didn't mean to spoil that. Oopsie-daisy. I'm gonna pull it up because this is probably my... When I saw this game in... Sp in two games... Is this video right here? I, 
think this is the end, right? Seed. Think... What feels like the unstoppable force over there. And, and he continues. No, not the check, <laughs> bro. That is player damage. This is the PK of last year. They did it again. It's unbelievable. They did it again. Wait, where is this Finn Shade? Ghost here? has land. There are three up from Radiant to look for the defense, but into the base go Pittsburgh Knights and Kings in trouble right away. For I think this is where Finch has it. Hold on, I know. As well, but the Pittsburgh Knights will not yield. They will not slow down. The Titan continues to fall. The damage too much, and PK are in your finals. How safe can you be with PK playing like this? Fuck, I know I'm sorry, but I I think the clip is here. With scary D playing this way. What about that man leading everybody in the player damage? This is the PK of last year. They did it again. It's unbelievable. Force over there, and, and he continues. No, why does nice. Finch say it? I've ended three storied are not done. Twig bolts. I forget where Finch never says it. You return from this position in competitive Aurora Blinks and Scary what? with no B, just the target, what? and he gets dunked by I'm a monster. What a play! between Aurora and Big Man Tings. And that is it, Radiance, making sure they get it done to improve. Oh, we're, this is such a specific thing, but. Oh, fuck it, whatever. But basically, I know we just want a little bit of a detour there, but it is probably just one of my fate. The way he says it, just one of my favorite quotes ever. But basically what Finn said is, you must come correct or you must not come at all and for this game and then the next game we're going to talk about i need you guys to think about that quote when thinking about this set with Wu and tanner and then this set with jc and tabs you must come correct or you must not come at all this is the story of that quote bro tabs put jc in the fucking rinser Game one, I think, you know, game one, JC won. Game two, Tabs just woke, awoken and destroyed him. Game three, Tabs had him beat. It was like six to three at one point. Like, Tabs was cooking him up. Then that quote that I said, you must come correct or you must not come at all. The, the veteranship of JC, the season one champ, realizing playoffs on the line with Garg, Slowbro, and I think Hitmontop as his last three alive versus these demons right here. Turn the game around. I mean, I don't know how you can come up with... Again, that quote just fits so perfectly, and I probably should have had it up before I started recording this video, but I just remembered it as I was finishing up explaining the set with Tanner and Wu. But holy shit. You must come correct or you must not come at all. And that's that story. I mean, Rillaboom with 8 kills, Overquill with 3. I mean... I mean, it was going to be a rough game from Fluttermane either way, because Hitmon top priority and bullshit, but... Having low pony and flutter main just have such a depressing performance. I mean, I don't know. I mean, Tabs franchise low pony, so he can't franchise for next season. But holy shit, you gotta think that he wastes the franchise points on low pony. I, I, it's had like one or two games this season where it really did well, and other than that, it hasn't. I don't know. It just, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, again. I'm going to keep repeating because it's that quote, bro. You must come correct or you must not come at all. And especially during this time of the season with playoffs on the line, a lot of coaches are trying to fight their way through. JC, we thought for a majority of the season he wasn't going to be making playoffs, but now he's awakening at the right time. And it's, it's scary. When you have the two coaches that won finals, season one and two, JC and MS, when you have them awakening at this time of the season i'd be very scared for teams going into playoffs obviously the bracket we saw earlier they play each other in the first round but if noah falls off a little bit or wait actually i think i had the bracket wrong i think i've had the bracket wrong this whole video 
Is JC's over and or Noah, I'm pretty sure. Let me go to the records real quick. Rankings. Yeah. My bad, I got it wrong. Sorry. I'm I have a stuffy nose. But yeah. Um we gotta go back actually. Holy shit. I I can't believe I just realized that. <clears throat> yeah, they, they don't even play each other actually. So we could have the same semifinals from last season. Again. And again, with how bad MS and JC seasons have been, the fact that we can have that rematch potentially is just crazy. So again, Josh and Noah, I mean, Noah, you are on thin ice, dog. I mean, you really got to start. If you're going to make playoffs, you really got to start doing the thing, man. But just, again, that quote of you must come correct or you must not come at all. This was, that was just this set. I mean, JC with his defensive mons of Hitmon, like JC plays so like, yeah, JC's scary with, like, shit. Like, last season, he had Mega Pinsir and it was scary. This season, he has Mega Sharpedo. But what really... Like, when you play GC, right? You might see his team think, Chi used the threat. Which it is. But the way JC uses his bulky mons and the way he can pivot around them and find openings with them, that is what you have to worry about when you play JC. Because... The way, like, just the way he knows how to use bulky mons is the scary thing. And it showed in this set. JC just knew what he had to do, and Tabs just didn't have an answer for it. I mean, he did in Rillaboom, but again, game, the reason why Tabs lost is because he let Rillaboom just eat a raw crunch from a Sharpedo, got it low, and then he didn't have it around for the rest of the game. I mean, he did... Was that like 20% afterwards and only had like a couple hits left in them? So, Tavs, you and uh, you and B just had heartbreaking defeats this week, and uh, it allowed an opening for JC to climb up. So, I mean, for the sake of a storyline, you can't really have a better storyline than what JC's going through right now. So, uh, let's hope that B and Tavs can uh, awaken a little bit and maybe kick out the season one champ out of playoffs. But as of right now, JC's looking pretty fire, so who knows? But yeah, let's uh let's keep the thing moving on. We had Chase versus New. Uh again, this is another game where Mawile got pretty far set up. He I think he got the plus six, but because Pranks are whimsical with Encore, not really that much of an issue. And as you can see on the layout, just Nito King 6 0. I mean, the the GOAT Aaron Jaeger. I mean this is a matchup like this is where Nido King thrives. Just the only thing on News Team that can outspeed it is Victini and Undertale when that's not an issue. Like Nido King just thrives on slow teams. They can't do much, and News Team is that. So I'm not surprised that Nido King had a, such an All Star performance. Uh, but my boy Johnny Adams pulling up again. I like that Chase has finally realized the importance of John Adams. Love to see my boy John Adams getting some play time in. But yeah. I mean, as you can just see, this is just kind of Nido King the show. But again, even then, new. I mean, it wasn't the worst performance ever. I think his game against Wu was 2 0 minus 4, so about the same. I mean, he brought some great tech. I mean, Scarf Slick Lazar to beat out the Mega Seth tile. I was not expecting that. That was really good, so. Uh, I don't know. I'll be right back. Oh man, alright, well I'm here. Um yeah, I mean 
this is yeah like i was saying new had some good tech but again just nito king just proved to be too much for him which for most teams in general pretty much is so good game from chase uh well new wasn't in the playoff race i mean just getting another win under your belt feels good so good game all around and uh yeah this game was oh god you can just see the kds here i mean let me pull up the picture from yesterday, bro. Like, Jesus Christ. Altaria just... I want y'all to understand. Altaria has not been doing good this season. As much as I wish it did. Altaria just has not been that guy this season. And I'll show you why. Because I haven't updated the kill sheet yet. So we actually get to see what Altaria's KD was going on. Altaria, as of currently, has a 7-16 and 16 KD. 7 and 16 on Mega Altaria. And he's been using it offensively for most of the season. So, for Altaria to have such a turnaround set is insane. And again, I Chi Yu was 8 and 0, and I thought no Pokemon was going to do that good for this week. And my, I mean, technically this is a last week game, but so was, okay, but both games were, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, anyway, just Altaria just destroyed him i mean game one uh noah played it really well he played it borderline perfectly he got the flame body burns he needed stole out the altario Doraki helmet it was really good but game two just what did altario get i know he got the max attack and max speed he got the plus six but jeez yeah bro he's at when you see this on the opposite side, bro, you got to be shitting yourself, dog. 1,400 attack and 884 speed on Altaria. Just, Jesus heavens. But, yeah, I mean, this was just Altaria the show. Josh could have brought a team of fucking... He could have brought Mouse Hold and four different... this four singlets with, like, Altaria and then not even bring a six. And he still would have won with Altaria. I mean, Altaria just put in a clinic this game. And, yeah, I mean, it wasn't a whole lot Josh could do. Or that Noah could do. I mean, it was just, Altaria just went in, man. I mean, sometimes you just have that matchup where you have a Mon that you just can't deal with. And Altaria was that Mon for Noah. I mean, Josh played it perfectly when, Te when the uh, Talonflame came out. He just set up the plus six because he knew Town Flame could hit him, really. And he just one shot it with return and get the flame body, and then he just won. So great awareness from Josh. But for Noah, I mean that just you play your boy and you just get swept like that. It just feels really bad. But honestly, I think he brought the team to deal with it. Like the webs was a good bring. Laylee was a good bring. Just Josh had his number man josh had his number and uh i think going into the next season i mean they could play in playoffs they could very well play in playoffs but uh that's if noah makes it because he's on thin ice right now they're like i'm talking about like some global warming ice dog like, he's on the thinnest of ice for playoffs and yeah i mean you really just gotta wonder if he makes it because coming out of the first couple weeks this season I think Noah was probably the scariest team for most people to think about playing. And uh, kind of like Preston, just mid to late season has just kind of fallen off a bit. But he's still in the playoffs as of now. But with B and Tabs right behind him. And even Preston. Preston's still in the race. So with those three coaches right behind him, you, you can't take it too lightly. You know what I mean? Like you got to gotta, you gotta show yourself. That you, you're worthy. Even though his record is 5-6. and six, He's got a great differential bump after this game. Not so much. But. Nonetheless. As long as Noah can just win like 2 out of the 3 games he has left. I think he should be fine. But. Just to be safe. He should definitely try to win. And go 8-6. and six. We will see what happens. This end of season has been fucking insane. And I believe. Yeah this is the last game of the week. And. My heavens, bro. I mean, when you talk of, I mean, Preston. I mean, not that, I mean. Hermes saw his opening in double. I mean, 
Dragapult. There's not. There's no analysis for this game. I mean, Mnes has had two games this season where he's won by plus eleven. One was against Josh, which was actually insanely impressive because Josh has been, you know, top team. Then this game against Preston, and I mean, holy shit! I mean, when you talk about coaches awakening, JC's game. He brought it back from the depths of hell, and Mnes he just diffed Preston. Absolutely. Jesus heavens, bro. Like, oh. You can just see the KDs and understand, bro. Like, Holt. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. And spe again, not just, just not. There's no analysis needed. We all saw what happened. Polk got behind the sub in front of the double, set up the plus a billion, and then just click dragging darts in the win. I mean, there's no analysis needed. Just drag a pull diff. And yeah, I mean. You know it's a rough game when Chin Pao only has one kill and you still get swept, bro. I mean, that, that's all I can say. But yeah, I mean, and that's very good at exposing the weaknesses within Preston's team and got to give him a round of applause for that. Just the veteranship of Mnaz understanding his one con there. Very impressive stuff. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is the bracket as of now. Got it wrong in the beginning of the video. I'm sorry to JC that I didn't had you in the wrong slot. But yep, this is the bracket as of now. Um, gonna be recording another video right after this. But that was the week 11 recap. And yeah, I mean, just a lot, a lot of great games this week. When I think a game of the seasons, like I said, going into this week, there are a game of the seasons gonna come out of week 11 or week 12. When I think of game of the season type games, I think of this game between B and Biff. I think of this game between uh, Wu and uh, the Dog. Like these three games are game of the season caliber games. So, who knows? We got a lot of good games left to be played. We've got three weeks left in the season until playoffs. So, excited to see how everyone fares. But uh, yeah, that is going to be it for me. Not really, because I have another video that I'm going to record right after this. But, uh, yeah. Uh, we're going to get on out of here and uh, record that video. So, hopefully, we did the thing. And, yeah. We're going to do the predictions now. Goodbye.